I haven't done anything in a while. So this is my 12 inch cube. So 12 by 12 by 12, that's one cubic foot. And that's, if it's full to the brim with nothing else in it, 7.49 gallons of water per cubic foot. So it's about a seven gallon tank, maybe a little less with all the stuff in it. And got a couple glow light tetras and some least keelyfish and some pygmy quarries around there and a lot of cherry shrimp and a lot of plants. The Sagittaria, Subulata, uh, this is Wind Love Java Fern. There's an Anubius, there's some of the narrow leaf Java Fern or one of the, just a plain Java Fern. And this uh, beautiful bronze crypt. So anyway, this is Ron, Garage Aquatics 2023. I thought I'd walk you through how I do the water change on this 16 gallon water box in the kitchen. What I did, I unplugged the filter. It's one of these little internal, I can't remember who it was. A night crew maybe? It's a good little filter. And inside, and I already cleaned it, there is a little container with a bag of charcoal in it, which this filter has been running for a year and a half now. So the charcoal's probably shot. However, it's um, really porous. So it acts to hold bacteria. It's in a little, little nylon bag. And then there's, here, there's a sponge filter in it, coarse sponge. And every time I take it apart, I find a little cherry shrimp in it. Um, and when I do, I put the, I pull the sponge out, coarse sponge, drop it in a measuring cup with a little bit of tank water and just sort of slosh around a little bit, pull all the cherry shrimp out with my shrimp net, throw them back in the tank. Then I clean that, that sponge. Um, and beyond that, I don't scrub it or anything. Uh, a lot of that slime's full of beneficial bacteria, at least that's what I think. And this I'll take, take apart once in a while and kind of clean the impeller and all. And then I drain the water down about two thirds. This is a cool little tank, water box. Um, and uh, it's full of java fern. There's an Amazon sword here that's God, way too much plant for this little tank. And one bronze crypt wenii that has spread. There's half a dozen little little starts there off of this main plant, which was right about in the center here. And there's one there, there's over here, there's a couple over here. Uh, there's a couple of Nubius in it. And I started this tank with 21 neon tetras and I had three jumpers. So I don't know what happened there. Um, and then Vanellope von Schwitz, uh, the uh, this uh, female betta, and she is the mother, mother, uh, she's the mother of uh, all the little betta juveniles that you've probably seen in some of my other videos. And there are three clown plecos in here. Yeah, good luck finding those. They'll come out occasionally lately. And then there's uh, half a dozen albino quarries. There's one glass surfing back there. And they spawned about a week and a half ago. Uh, clouded over that day and they started spawning. And I got about 60 eggs or so and a bunch of them hatched and then I proceeded to kill them all. And I feel awful about that. So I'm hoping they spawn again. So what I'm gonna do is uh, cold water. Um, here's, here's the tank water that came out. A lot of tannins in this from this uh, chunk of, I think it's called Mopani, this chunk of wood in there. Um, and I'll throw that on the patio plants. Never throw this stuff away. And I pulled off some dead, some dead fern fronds. Clean it up a little bit. Um, oh, there's another one. I just if they they look a little ratty, and if I give them a tug and they come right out, that's how I prune. Otherwise, I don't mess with them too much. And there's some hyd hydrocotyl Japan in here too. Let's go to the other side. This is the side we see most because this is the side the kitchen sinks on. So we're doing dishes here and we're staring at the tank most of the time. Another Nubia's on this side. There's Sirius stone in here, um, and those. Uh, Albino quarry started spawning in this corner right here. And then they were spawning on the side of the filter too. Ah, geez, I really blew it. Um, another little uh, Anubius down there um, in that hydrocotyl Japan. And I'm hoping they'll give me another shot at it, you know? And then also when I see this, see a piece of, when I, I was scooping the water out, instead of draining it with a hose, I was just scooping the water out with this, uh, this four cup uh, measuring cup into the bucket, out to the porch. But a lot of times these pieces of uh, java fern will, little tiny ones will float up. And sometimes I see these bigger ones and I will throw them aside 
and I put them in another tank and they're just multiplying like crazy. And someday I will put Java Fern up on my eBay page. Right now I have Guppy Grass up on my eBay page. Go take a look at it. I'll put a link down in the, in the description. And there's some more uh, Java Fern stuck in there. And I got some Sawasatang and I think what I'm gonna do is once it gets going, I'm gonna put some down in this corner. Doesn't need a lot of light. And maybe, just maybe, those neons will use it as a spawning mop. And maybe I'll get some neon fry going in there. So the way I fill this is just with the kitchen faucet here. Hang it in kind of carefully because I don't want to crack the tank. So I'm not going to do this while I'm on video because I don't have my tripod with me. Uh, but I will fill it up and then I will add the appropriate chemicals, which is uh, I use uh, uh, the API, the... Uh, tap water conditioner and then I'll put some uh, the CO2 boost in it and then a little bit of the uh, aquarium co-op easy green fertilizer and that'll be that so I'll bring you back after I fill it and look who made an appearance there's one of the little clown plecos they almost always come up when I do a water change and there he's gone I can still see his tail sticking out right there under the nubius I also have a little pothos hanging in here I don't know if that's silver queen or what and a philodendron hanging over from this jar that I've got. I've had that jar going for about a year and a half. It's one gallon jar, it's got some planting media at the bottom. And pothos and philodendrons just rooted all the way down in it. There might even be a shrimp or two in there. And I'm sure I mentioned there's red cherry shrimp in here, a bunch of them. I, uh, cause I, I toss them back when I pull them out of the filter. So I did mention it. And they come out. And we're, I don't know. Water's up about halfway from where it was down. Takes a little while with this. It's kind of a slow process. So after it's full, both this tank and the other one, that, that cube with the pygmy quarries, I am gonna put a bunch of uh, frozen bloodworms in here. Um, and I'd seen that on Keeping Fish Simple where he said, you know, something about, Nick said something about, uh, um, you know, doing a water change and then add a bunch of food, it might make the fish think that, uh, you know, with the water change, the rains came and they're up, food is abundant, so they might be inclined to lay eggs. And, and that would be cool. That would be cool to have that happen again. So that's full. It's about an inch, inch and a quarter from the top. And I don't know if that's enough to keep fish from jumping, but I usually try and keep it about that, maybe even a little lower, maybe an inch and a half or so from the top. Okay, so then the chemicals go in, and I've got about a mill in each one of these capfuls, and this is the tap water conditioner, so I'll pour that in, and I always rinse the cap out. And this is the API uh, CO2 boost, and again, I rinse the cap out. And this is the aquarium co-op, and it's one squirt per 10 gallons, so a little extra maybe, so. Oh, there there's two squirts and then I put the filter back together and plug that in okay so all full all chemicaled up uh, the filters running I've got some frozen blood worm melting in my hand because it's only 105 outside uh, but still that's um, it's not 105 in here I think the AC zone is probably about 74 75 uh, but the and the tap water probably comes out at 74 75 or more um it'll actually cool down so it might even come out hotter than that so a lot of times i will hold these cubes in my between my fingers and rub them around this way it spreads out through the water column and the fish all get it you can see here these are the guys that really i know that the quarries love worms oh, i forgot to mention there's also i think three auto sinkless in there and there's one on the rock right there right in the middle of the screen um these are one of my favorite foods for, for the fish because, you know, it's, I mean, unless you saute them with a little salt and pepper and some butter and olive oil and garlic, you know, I wouldn't touch them. And I still wouldn't touch them, I'm kidding. But anyway, so there it is. So everybody's happy that the neon tetras love these things. I had to have neon tetras when I got this tank because those were one of the tank that fish I had when I was a kid. And this is the first tank I've had since I was in my 20s. So that's a long time ago. Let's go around the other side. While we're around the other side, I thought I'd uh, feed the cube too. 
Get a lot of extra bloodworms in this tank. The shrimp go nuts over them too. They, you see a little shrimp walking off with a piece of bloodworm bigger than it is. It cracks me up. I think they're one of the most fun things to have are cherry shrimp. I've got three different kinds. I've got the red cherries, uh, one called Blue Dream, a really dark blue. Some of them are almost black. And then uh, one's called Orange Sunkissed. Okay, so here's the other side. Not a lot of activity on this side because I fed on the other side. There's a nice piece of java fern I could stick my hand in or my, uh, I'm gonna say landscaping tweezers, monocoscaping tweezers and pull that out. And these will all go into uh, um, another tank, kind of a farm tank that I have. I've got a couple farm tanks. So I'm starting, to, I said that I'm starting to sell plants online. Got be grass for one. Um, so, but anyway, there's a lot of the neons right in there. Kind of huddled in the center. Cool fish, just cool little fish, no matter what. There's one that's got a bad eye. It's been like that for, God, I don't know how long. Well, it's that Christmas moss in here. I've had a real problem with this green hair algae. And there's, there may or may not still be a little bit. I didn't try and, I didn't even look when the water was down on that piece of wood sticking up. And when the water's down, what I'll do is I'll grab a pipette and some hydrogen peroxide and dose it and let it sit out of the water for a little bit while I'm uh, finishing the water change and doing whatever else I'm doing. And it seems to have gotten it under control because I had a bunch on this piece of wood too near this Christmas moss. And what's left of this Christmas moss, it just got so infested with that algae. Um, and usually I'll get big wads of it in here. So I didn't see any this time. So maybe, just maybe, I'm getting a jump on it. Well, this is my little harvest of uh, Java fern. This one piece is kind of nice. A little, little bit of a rhizome going on it. The other ones are real small. I don't know if you know it or not. I think I did a video about this. These form along the uh, mid ribs and along the tips underneath the fronds, uh, the sport producing structure, the sorry, uh, underneath the fronds, uh, the spores will actually germinate there and new little plantlets start to form. And eventually they start forming their own little rhizomes like this one. And you got a whole other plant. So Java fern farm. So here we are all cleaned up, finished. It's next day, so anything that was still floating around in the water column should have settled out. The glass has been wiped down mostly. Let me go to the other side of the faucet here. A couple of the albino quarries. I really like them. I like quarries in general. I think they're just such cool little fish. And Vanellope von Schweetz, she's kind of a hoot. I'll put a link up to uh, uh, one of the videos with all her uh, her offspring. And there's one of the autocyclists on that piece of Mopani wood. And naturally all the neon tetras We're not going to see a clown pleco right now until uh, until I feed maybe later. I dropped some slices of cucumber in here last night, and I don't see them. So I think everybody, even the neons, go for those. Let's go back to this side. All right, let's go to the other side of the tank. So before we go to the other other side, let's go to the end, an end view. I always like end views of aquariums. There's something special about them. Just being able to look the depth, the perspective is different. But there it is. And these are these little chunks of, uh, I think they're called spider wood. I don't remember. I got two or three pieces at the local PetSmart when I set this tank up. And here we are with the glare and all that on the other side. There's Vanellope again. She's quite a ham. She's a sweet fish. I really like her. And she made some really pretty babies. And all the neons. And you can see that big crypt now. And see if I can get all the pups that came off of it. There might be pushing eight or 10. And I think that's a, a root coming across there would be either the pothos or the philodendron up there. All right, let's go look at the 
the cube. And here's the side view of the cube. And again, it was a little murky after I finished cleaning it yesterday. I ran a little, got a little tiny uh, gravel vac. And you can't really get to any of the gravel, but it sucked a lot of the, a lot of the mold up from out of the Sagittaria. And after pouring water in it, stirred a lot of that mold, what was left up. It's a cool little tank. All right. So anyway, I appreciate you coming along for this. I'm sitting in front of the the cube here. Uh, this was a cool little tank. I got this on Amazon for, God, I don't even remember if it was $70. It was a nice little tank, all glass, mitered corners. Uh, so there's no real silicone to deal with uh, on the inside of the tank. So it makes it a lot easier to scrape and clean. And, you know, I just layered it with, uh, I think I put uh, some pond soil in the center and then uh, maybe a little bit of the aqua soil and then capped it with sand and probably used builder's sand it looks like in this one and then uh gravel and rocks in there and some pieces of wood and like that it's been a great tank i really like this i'd like to get about half a dozen of these half a dozen more and get one of those steel racks like they use in a you know kind of like a kitchen rack and stack them uh put five or six on the rack and maybe put a male bed in each one um just for, a, you know, have, have a better tank and maybe with some little uh, dither fish, a little company for them, you know, about pygmy quarries, any kind of quarries, uh, any, who, who knows, we'll figure it out. But anyway, I really appreciate you being here for this. And as always, thanks for watching.